Hello and welcome to It's Free IP. I'm your host, Felix Chaplin, and seeing that you guys seem to really like my previous video about words whose meanings have changed, I'm back with five more words. Before I get started, I'd like to encourage you to check out the other content on this channel, including our new show, Pussyville. It's like if Sesame Street and Bluey were targeted towards young adults, teaching life skills and how to adult. With all that out of the way, let's get on with the list. Number one on this list was suggested in the comments from the previous video about words whose meanings have changed, and its origins are pretty well known. Faggot. In modern parlance, this word, and its shortened form, fag, are used as anti gay slurs. The term originally referred to a bundle of sticks, and part of that meaning is retained in British English, where the word fag is a slang term for cigarettes. A common misconception about how this term became an anti-gay slur is that back in the Middle Ages, when accused witches were burned at the stake, homosexuals would also be burned, but without a stake. They'd be burned among bundles of sticks, aka faggots. There are a few theories as to why this word became associated with gay men. One states that it was a shortening of the 16th century pejorative term faggot gatherer, which referred to elderly widows who made their living by gathering and selling firewood. Another theory states that it's in reference to a common practice in British public schools called fagging, in which younger students had to act as servants for older students. This practice that ran from the late 17th century to the end of the 20th century often included physical and sexual abuse of younger boys who were referred to as fags. Yet another theory claims that it may have come from the Yiddish word fagala, which literally means little bird, but is also used as a pejorative term for gay men. Whoa. Halt there, friend. You've just entered the territory of Robin Hood and his merry men. Fagalus? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, 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 no. We're straight. Just marry. Something else worth noting is that the words fascism and faggot actually have shared etymological roots. They both come from the Latin word fascis. It was a symbol for the Roman Empire and Mussolini's fascist party used to demonstrate the strength in unity. Make of that what you will. He's right! Individually we are weak, like a single twig! But as a bundle we form a mighty faggot! <gasps> Pop quiz. If the past tense form of ride is road, what is the past tense form of chide? The answer is chided. Or at least that's the modern form of the word. The archaic past tense form of chide is chode. The word chide means to quarrel or argue. The modern definition of chode refers to male genitals of a certain size and shape, upon which I shan't elaborate any further. The word chode appears twice in the King James Bible. First in Genesis 31:36. And Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban. And then in Numbers chapter 20, verse 3. And the people chode with Moses. Toward the end of 2022, Elon Musk bought Twitter and very quickly enacted a number of changes to the platform, one of which was the introduction of Twitter Blue. Just like how you no longer need to be a famous person, a politician, or an official business account to get a blue check mark on Twitter, you also no longer need to be a licensed medical practitioner to call elongated muskrat the next three words on this list. Idiot, imbecile, and moron. Today, all three of these terms refer to a stupid or foolish person, but back in the 19th and early 20th centuries, they were medical terms. That's right. Doctors used to diagnose people as idiots, morons, and imbeciles. You ever mentioned his mental state? Oh, he's an imbecile, probably from birth. Man's a complete idiot. While these three terms are used interchangeably today, there were concrete differences between the diagnostic criteria for each. Someone with an IQ score of 0 to 24 was an idiot, 25 to 50 would make them an imbecile, and morons were the highest at 51 to 70. Of these three words, I find the etymology of idiot to be the most fascinating. Apparently, it originated from the ancient Greek word idiotis, meaning a private citizen or common person. It could also refer to a layperson or someone who lacks professional skills. That particular meaning of the word guided its evolution to meaning unskilled or ignorant, which is when it got brought into Latin, and its trajectory is pretty clear from there. Thank you very much for watching this video. Can you think of any other words whose meanings have changed? Be sure to let me know in the comments. If you found this video interesting and informative, don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you'll be the first to see what's new from It's Free IP.